Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. We're still in the same t-shirt, don't worry, I don't smell just yet. I'm recording it straight after. I recorded yesterday's six things we learned from Chelsea's win away at Brentford. Today we're still in the studio, feeling good about this, you know. I think I might have to do something a bit like this. I don't know, like if we could change the, the white background to a bit of Chelsea blue, you know, the orange that we got on GBFC, get a couple of shirts hung up. I don't know, what do you think? Do you like the bedroom vibe where it's a bit laid back as if we're just chilling as if we're talking in the pub? Or do you think we should go all out and actually make a bit of a studio vibe going on here on GBFC? Let me know which one you prefer. But today, I wasn't going to do a video talk about Lukaku just yet because six games without a goal yeah it's kind of like there's a lot of people jumping on his back now the same way that people still jump on the back of Timo Werner and then I thought about it and I thought well just because I don't necessarily agree that we all need to be going a little bit mad at Romelu Lukaku at this point I definitely think there's a balanced argument to be had here about his current form, about his overall start to the season at Chelsea, and what I think we should do about it in a progressive sense in the mind of myself, but thinking about Chelsea and Thomas Tuchel, decision-making, what's good for the team, what's right for Lukaku. And I want to discuss it today, because Romelu Lukaku has got six X's to his name in the last six games, which means he's not scored a goal in six matches. Now, during that time, Chelsea haven't exactly gone into the abyss. We've not capitulated at all. We're currently top of the Premier League. We've got a Champions League game tomorrow night against Malmo, which we should be looking to win to keep our place in the top two of the Champions League group. Carabao Cup, we're still in that as well. Is there much to worry about here? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe from an individual sense, we can look at Lukaku's immediate start when he arrived at Chelsea and think, well, that debut against Arsenal was pretty good, wasn't it? Have we seen the same kind of level of performance since then? No. But does that mean that he's a bad striker? Does it mean that we've got back Mr. Flipping Builder's shoes, Lukaku, that people called him at Manchester United? I don't think it does. I think at the moment in time, Romelu Lukaku's came into Chelsea. It is very, very evident from the way that Chelsea play, from everything that Thomas Tuchel's already said, that there is an element of adaptation from what these Chelsea players have been doing ever since Thomas Tuchel came in to what we now have to do to accommodate for the talents and best abilities of Romelu Lukaku. At the same time, I'm also somebody who is of the mindset that every single team should never be built around one individual player when there is the plethora of quality that Chelsea have. The fact that the goals right now are not being scored by Lukaku and are not being flooded in still yet by Timo Werner concerns some people when they analyse Chelsea and they talk about their chances of winning the league. I'm talking here about Paul Scholes. His comments on the overlap, which I think is an incredible show, by the way, Gary Neville's podcast thing where he's got Josh Denzel hosting, Jamie Carragher's there, Scholes, and then he's got a floor full of football fans. Now, Lewis, who is somebody you might know within the Chelsea community, he was talking about Chelsea and asking Paul Scholes the question about why he doesn't think they're going to challenge. Paul Scholes said, don't think you're going to score enough goals and I think you're going to concede too many at the back. That was a bad impression of Paul Scholes, but it was basically me saying I thought his comments were absolute nonsense. Wherever the goals come from in a team, when you're still top of the league and you play the teams that we've played, there is an element of irrelevance about this kind of opinion until Chelsea start consistently drawing blanks or losing football matches. It doesn't matter that Ben Chilwell has scored two in the last two and Lukaku hasn't scored in six and Timo Werner isn't still breaking the net every time he goes out on the field. I don't think this is that important. And I think the reason is because there is too much focus on strikers scoring goals. You might be thinking, Benson, that sickness you've had for the last week, I think it might have actually adjusted a few of those brain cells that you still might have had in the bonds. Absolutely not. I think the problem I have is that I've listened to people bashing Timo Werner for over a year despite being Chelsea's top contributing player for goals last season in total and we won the bloody Champions League. People bash Timo Werner every time he misses the ball. Every time he has a shot that doesn't go in, people are literally there just like... 
It does my head in. Now Lukaku's gone six games without a goal and everyone's like, yeah, Matt, he's not good enough. Chelsea ruined strikers, really. Like, he's got, a bit, he's got to improve. There is an element of this that kind of just annoys me. And that is the element that I've spoken about so far in this video. The second bit is the question that I think is how we understand how to get out of this Lukaku no goal problem, if you want to call it that. And I guess it is a problem. Romelu Lukaku is a very niche striker, but he's very good at very many things. And he's come out and said that himself, that he doesn't just want to be seen as the big lump target man up front, or you try and get the ball to him and then he might hold it off and then someone's going to come in and score. However, the one thing that I've seen from what Lukaku's been doing in the last few games where he hasn't scored goals is I think he's kind of still waiting for what he thinks is the best service for him every single time. Now, when you're a striker and you're at a new club, there is an element of adjustment that everybody needs to make to accommodate for that striker, as I've already said. But I think Lukaku's movement needs to be a lot more proactive. I think he needs to be trying to make runs at different times as opposed to waiting necessarily for the ball to go out wide before he makes a run forward. And I also think that the players around him still need to be doing more. I've been happy with Timo Werner. I think the first half against Brentford, he was doing well. I think he was involved himself well and I think that he allowed Lukaku's movement to be a bit more fluid and a bit less predictable in that final third because Werner was moving around a lot more. Second half didn't see it so much and I think the problem that Chelsea have right now yeah okay the goals aren't coming in from Lukaku and they're still not coming in from Timo Werner but I think that it's simply a case of Lukaku is still coming in to a new team a very young team Chelsea have got to get used to playing with that kind of striker again. When we had Timo Werner up front alone last season, we had to get used to trying to play a different way. Timo Werner likes to run in behind. He likes to come out wide that sometimes left absolutely nobody in the box. We've got somebody in the box now, but it doesn't mean that we have to keep lofting the ball, crossing the ball. We do need to get a lot better creatively. And I think with all of these videos where I give my opinion on these kind of things, it's kind of worthless for me to sit here for 10 minutes and just say, no, I think Paul Scholes chatted a load of rubbish. I think we need to relax about Lukaku a little bit for now without trying to give some progressive feedback in terms of what I think could be done in order to solve the Lukaku issue. Now, I don't just want to throw a little flaky comment out there and say patience is necessary, but patience is necessary for sure. Six games without a goal, but Chelsea still winning football matches is good with me. It doesn't leave me with a big, big cloud over my head thinking is Lukaku good enough? Have we actually wasted our money here? It's not the case. However, I do think with Lukaku, we are going to have to see some tactical adjustments in the way that we attack. And I think that that could be, and again, it's very hard to actually come to a conclusion as to what it exactly is that we need right now. But I think at the moment, he probably is letting the confidence shattering attempts of the media who are like every game that goes by without a goal. As much as Lukaku, I think, is a really strong minded character, I think at the moment it might well be getting to him a little bit. And when you look at Timo, who has gone under the exact same scrutiny, he might just be thinking, oh God, like when this starts, it tends to spiral and continue. And I think at the moment, it is simply a Lukaku just needs to score a goal to be able to start scoring consistently again. I think we're not seeing him score at all in the last six games because, well, he's missed a few big chances. People have got on his back. People start talking about it a little bit too much. And I genuinely think in football right now, Chelsea, ever since we signed Fernando Torres from Liverpool, Ever since we signed bloody Matija Kesman back in the day, he was supposed to be a prolific goal scorer. That didn't quite work out, did it? But Chelsea have always had a knack in the media's eyes of ruining strikers. And I think it's very easy and it sells very well. If Chelsea strikers aren't scoring, the media jump on it like a flipping bag of potatoes that cost you 55 pence and it'll last you a year. That was a dreadful phrase that I just used out there. I don't even know why I said that. But I think Lukaku's confidence is a little bit hit right now. But the fact we keep on winning means I'm not concerned because I think that goal will come and then I think this whole thing will be done. I don't think he's just going to score one more and then go on another drought. It's not going to happen. I wouldn't be concerned about Lukaku right now. Malmo in the Champions League at the weekend. I've just had a message from the guy fixing my MacBook, guys. I don't know if this is good or bad. He's just wrote George. It's always bad when they just write George, isn't it? Hello. 
To round up this video, I'd say that we shouldn't be too concerned right now about Romelu Lukaku. I think I wanted to make this video today just to really kind of put a spanner in the consistency that is people slating Chelsea strikers, be it through the newspapers, the radio, online articles, whatever it may be, other YouTube videos. People like to jump on it because Chelsea in the past may not have got the best out of certain strikers. But Romelu Lukaku, I said we needed more in the tier list a few weeks ago. That didn't change after the game against Brentford, but I'm not too concerned. I think there needs to be a little adjustments that are made in both his movement, the movement around him, the variety of different ways we try and reach him. And I still think Thomas Tuchel is finding the perfect balance. But the best thing for Chelsea is when we're still trying to find our top gear and that perfect balance, we're still top of the league. And I think that is a very incredible reason to be excited. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Tomorrow is Malmo away in the Champions League. Maybe a banana skin again, but I think we should be winning this one. So my match preview, going to try and get it out for you guys tomorrow. Obviously, again, dependent on various different things, but I'll keep you guys updated on both Twitter and also Instagram. So if you're not following me there, then I suggest that you do so. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you all later. Come on, you blues.